Okay, we are going to go through convertible term insurance here. We're going to go through how convertible term policies work, when they might be appropriate, and then really the limitations. This is the important factor to be aware of that a lot of times consumers and agents find out after the fact, and that's where we have a situation of, oh man, I wish I would have known that before I started. So how it works, let's begin with that. Let's assume that I have a 20 year term insurance policy million bucks per year, I'm sorry, million dollar death benefit, premium is $500 per year, and we're going to assume I start this policy in 2020, and I am a healthy individual. In this specific example, we are going to look at a 35 year old male. Okay. Now, how a convertible term insurance policy works is if I purchase a $1 million death benefit, We'll assume that it is 20 years. That policy is convertible for the 20 year period. Some policies require that we add a rider. Uh, often it's termed as an extended term conversion rider or a different name that really locks in the ability to be able to convert that term policy to whole life insurance for the entire 20 year period. Now, a couple things here is when I convert a policy, really what it allows me to do is if I start at age 35 in 2020, I have a health rating, best class, is when I eventually convert that to whole life, my whole life policy will carry the same best class health rating that I received when I originally took that term insurance policy out. So another way to put it is that no medical underwriting is required with term conversions. It's a nice way to lock in my health. Another purpose for it is I may really be attracted to the idea of a high cash value life insurance policy. I want the ability to put in X amount of dollars, but I'm just not there yet. I know money's coming in, maybe it's a pay raise, maybe it's a promotion, maybe it's an inheritance, but I'm not there yet. However, I want to lock in my insurability to be able to obtain a policy down the road. Can absolutely do that, and a convertible term policy will fit that need. Now, when it comes to the conversion feature, some things to be aware of. Assuming I have a $1 million death benefit, let's say five years into it, I want to convert the full 1 million. No problem. Let's say I only want to convert $500,000, meaning I'm going to take out a $500,000 whole life insurance policy that will be based off of my rating, best class, what I received when I took the term policy out, and then I would maintain the $500,000 term policy, and this was originally a 20 year term. I converted it five years after the fact, which means I have 15 years remaining on that. Now, because it is 500,000 and no longer $1 million, it will be repriced with most companies and the price will likely kick down to about 250 bucks. It is still based off of my age when I took the term policy out at age 35. So a lot of good things. Again, the key advantage is that I can convert over to whole life insurance, design a policy for high cash value life insurance without having to go through underwriting again. Now the premiums I pay, so if I've got a $500 per year premium here and I convert it five years after the fact, so at age 40, the premiums I paid, which would have been $2,500, those are gone. So that is, rent you can call it. Now that is a cheap way to obtain life insurance to protect the need term and life insurance definitely has a place but when I convert a policy with most companies and products I do not recapture the premiums I paid. Some a couple out there do offer that they let you go back to the original age but it often has mech problems whenever we've we've studied that. So let's go through some limitations here because this is important and it's kind of the I didn't know that, which always pops up after the fact. And if we can be prepared for everything that can pop up, well, that'll prevent any chance of buyer's remorse, call it. So same situation, I've got that million dollar policy. What happens with a convertible term policy is first, whenever I convert it to whole life, it's typically 
company to company. It's got to be within the same insurance company. So if I take out a $1 million term policy with company A, when I convert it 5, 10, 20 years down the road, it has to be with company A. There are some programs out there that allow you to take a term policy and flip it over to a whole life with another carrier, typically within the first three to five years, depending on companies and limitations, but that's a bit different than a convertible term. So here, limitations with a convertible term typically have to do with policy blending. All right, so blending, we talk about this frequently has to do when we design a cash a life insurance policy, my money can go where? I'm not going to go through all the details here. Premium or the PUA component. Now, when we design a policy for maximum cash value from start to finish, we are frequently considering and utilizing a term insurance rider. A lot of times that is a fit. It's a cost efficient way really to raise my MEC limit and keep my premium low because the premium eats up the bulk of your cash value in particular during the first year and sometimes the first and second year. Depends on the product. So typically if we go with a 10% premium and a 90% PUA, that's going to allow us to juice the cash value. So a lot of times one says, okay, let me take out a term policy and then I want to convert it over to whole life with a maximum cash value policy, minimum premium. Limitations will prevent us from doing that. And if you have not watched our policy design video and you want more information on the premium and PUA, how to structure it efficiently, I'd encourage you to view that. So with the limitations specifically here, when it comes to the premium component, all companies have different rules here. Let's use this one example here. If I want to convert five years into it and I have a $1 million death benefit, the premium piece, how I should rephrase this, is the whole life death benefit must be at least 50% of the total death benefit. Meaning if I'm converting $1 million and I'm blending a policy, I say get my premium as low as possible, we're going to have limitations here as the whole life portion will be 500K, which will force a much higher base premium, likely to be closer to 25% for a 40 year old male, which will impact the cash value. So know this can be a bit complex because I'm just looking at a convertible term policy. The quick answer would be, hey, you can buy a term policy today based off your health rating. And then when you convert it, if it's five years down the road, 10 years down the road, whenever, it's based off your health rating now, and you can design a policy for high cash value. That's true, but if I am interested in getting the maximum cash value, maximum amount of money of my deposits in any situation, I wanna be aware of what limitations exist so I don't figure something out after the fact that I wish I would have known when I first started. So let's look at an example. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.